Hello, Trev here. Um, today I want to do a Time to Talk video on grief. So if you've not heard about the Time to Talk videos, um, I've done a little playlist and they're basically talking about mental health topics to open them out and feel they're uh, a little bit more accessible for, for people to, um, yeah, to talk about. So at this time of year, I think about my housemate, Alex Kirkley, who um, passed away five years ago in a, an accident. He was a a tree surgeon and it was um, yeah very sudden so it was a big a big shock when he um, passed away so I remember him I remember his smile I remember the joy he brought to my house and um, all of the plans we had um, to sort of like do um, things together and yeah I also remember after he died all of the emotions of um, anger and um, sadness and hopelessness um, I remember the confusion and the anxiety and I remember get, being a bit kind of scared of going out and um, I remember um, being afraid of trees um, for a bit. And all of those emotions, I think, um, are quite kind of important to sort of think about why why they why they were there. Um, so since Alex died, I've been um, quite involved with a charity called Abandoned Brothers and they're a really great charity to check out. I'll put the link um, in the descriptions below somewhere. And um, yeah, they um, think of the idea of grief as being um, a practice. So not an emotion, but a practice. So something, something we need to practice to become better at grieving. And I know that um, people deal with grief in very different ways. So sometimes some people might um, put it in a in a box, if you like, and sort of get on with life and kind of cut off this um, this experience or um, it can be quite traumatizing. And I remember when Alex died, um, first of all, there was um, a great sense of me wanting to sort of, um, well, I don't know, kind of pretend it hadn't happened, um, as weird as that sounds. Like um, there was an element of kind of coming to terms with it or a denial, um, some people might say, um, there's also um, an element of, um, yeah, sadness. I mean, it is sad when someone dies. So I'm not sort of trying to um, reframe it completely against the kind of the sad sensation. But but really what you're grieving is the um, the joy of someone's life. You know, you're kind of you're kind of tapping into the fact that you um, you miss them and you, you loved them and you um, uh, you you hurt because of of, of a loss of of that connection. So really, I guess where I hope to get with grief is, is kind of a value of, of someone's life. So yeah, it's one certainty that we will all, we will all die. So we'll all experience grief and we'll all experience, um, yeah, loss. So it's, it's, it's certain we, we will. So, so anyway, so Band of Brothers, um, treat it like a practice and it's, it's been really helpful for me to, to practice grief, um, some people, um, you know, find religion is a really helpful way to, to practice, um, to practice grief. I think religion for me sometimes is helpful and sometimes is um, very unhelpful um, or spirituality as well. But um, but yeah, having, say, um, ritual can be really important. So um, like candles are really good and um, different spaces to go. So it could be in nature, in fields or by um, rivers, seas, that sort of thing. And the other day I went with a friend, Ricky, to um, Rose Hill Cemetery. And um, I don't think he <laughs> he's not done that before. Um, he's never actually been to Rose Hill Cemetery, and even though it's just around the corner. But for me, I find um, sometimes going to places like that is quite nice ways and um, quite a nice way to um, to remember people that have have died. And it doesn't have to necessarily be the the um, the place that they're they're buried. It can be um, just, a, you know, a local a local church um, churchyard. Um, for me and um, so you might want to to think about that is there a space um is there a ritual um you know is there something you can do to remember someone that's passed away um yeah someone else i want to mention is um carly barry who um sadly took her own life 20 years ago she was suffering um from me and um it's the same illness my sister suffers from so we were connected um through that kind of link and I wrote a song to one of her beautiful poems. You can have a look at the um, the video I made and also um, read her poem. Um, so the poem's about isolation and she was suffering for a long time with, with her ME and also with, I, I guess, uh, mental health issues um, and felt very isolated and cut off and misunderstood and mis mis 
mistreated, I guess, as lots of people with ME um, do feel still. Um, it's interesting for me thinking now um, with the lockdown, a lot of people have had this experience of isolation. Um, a lot more people have experienced it and could probably connect with that feeling of, yeah, yeah, being cut off and, um, yeah, feeling desperate. So, um, yeah, um, that's kind of... Um, a, t a kind of a two, two, two sided thing because there's a lot more people suffering from it. So hopefully they can connect and sort of think they're not alone, but also it's, it's really um, sad and perhaps dangerous that there are so many people who do feel very isolated and cut off and perhaps vulnerable. So that's why I think the time to talk idea is, is really, is really good. Um, yeah. I've also um, had a few friends um, who've had quite, big griefs um, recently. So um, I know um, a close uni friend, um, one of my best friends, his mum passed away. And I can't really, um, I can't really kind of fully relate to that because thankfully both my parents are still alive. But this idea that someone that you've always known um, dying and not being there anymore, I imagine that shakes you quite a lot because your whole idea of um, of the world maybe alters a bit and it'll never be never be the same. Um, and obviously, you know, if you, if you live with someone, um, that's changing, changing your every day. Yeah. And one of my friends, um, his daughter, um, passed away when she was, um, extremely young and, um, yeah, I don't know how, how he kind of coped with that, but I talked to him about grief, um, quite, quite a bit actually more, more than anyone else. And, um, yeah, I do think about um, Willow and um, yeah, how how that that must must have been. I know he he's kind of like trying to and, and does achieve it very well, seemingly to to kind of um, feel grateful for her life, even though she was taken so so young. But I I, I think that's um, definitely an experience that's gonna um, that's gonna really um, really be be hard to grow to grow through. It's it's a practice for him to to remember um will remember to live even though um she's gone if you sort of mean um one of my other friends um she um lost her partner um tragically and i i, I think about think about her as well and i think about um yeah how how she must feel and and that's yeah obviously really really sad too um, I think about my cousin Amanda as well. She died um, not too long ago, a year or so, and she um, was suffering for a long while with alcohol um, problems. Um, and yeah, that's really, um, really sad. So someone that, that, you know, wasn't really kind of coping as well as she might have done with life. And um, yeah, my dad and my uncle, yeah, have tr tried many times to sort of break that um that cycle but um but yeah it wasn't it wasn't to be so um politically i think um donald trump and joe biden um handle this kind of idea of the covid deaths very differently it was on the on the news but donald trump seemed to kind of maybe brush away the fact that so many people had died from covid and um a lot of people were very upset about this kind of lack of acknowledging um the the death and Joe Biden perhaps um, treats that a little bit differently and hopefully America and certainly, um, yeah, we can hopefully kind of learn from that a bit that um, we do need to nationally grieve um, some some things. Um, well, lots of things, in fact. But um, but yeah, I'm not really a Trump fan, as you can probably tell. But um, but yeah, I don't really agree with this idea of kind of not not acknowledging grief. I think it's just really, really important to, to talk about. The idea of these videos is also to kind of open up discussion a little bit. It's a bit weird on, on YouTube because it can't be completely two way, but do um, let me know if you've got any comments. Um, you're very welcome to, um, to drop me a message and um, talk about this topic. That's kind of the idea of the videos as well. And um, yeah, if you've got someone to talk to um, about grief, then I encourage you to do it. Um, also, I'm just sort of like um, thinking about people that are grieving at the moment. Maybe you've, you've uh, had someone that you've lost in the last year in lockdown and you've not been able to grieve 
in the way that you might have before. Maybe, you know, there, there might have been funerals that you've not been able to go to or not been able to see people in the same way. Certainly a lot of people are talking about a lack of human connection or hugs. I know that um, often when, when we grieve, we might hug, hug and cry. And these emotions might kind of feel a little bit um, cut off which is really sad. So, um, so I do feel for people that, um, that are grieving and they're, they're trying to find new ways to, um, to practice grieving. Um, I hope you found that video useful. Um, like I say, do um, click subscribe and have a look for my other Time to Talk videos if you find them interesting. And I'll see you again. Bye.